This is the Scorpion G, and this is the most sold out tank in World of Tanks history. So, do you think that the price is still justified in 2024? Stick around and uh, let's find out. It's when it was sold, this was the first tank that could be considered as overpowered. So, the tank in itself had still a few drawbacks, but the good things about the tank made it such that it was a no-brainer to take this tank and buy it in the detriment of any other tank that was being sold. So you have to remember that this tank was probably introduced around 2015 and uh, at that time the competition of this tank were tanks like the KV-5, like the Super Pershing. After that I think there were the Chryslers and uh, other tanks that have had around 175 or the T-44s, tanks which had around 175 pen. It was a time when having 200 pen with your Tigers was considered a good pen at Tire 7 or Tire 8. So this tank came along with 246 pen with a gun with 490 alpha that could basically two shot a lot of uh, Tire 7s and Tire 8 uh, tanks because this was before some of the lower tires got more HP to uh, balance out the fact that uh, you had bigger guns in the game. So this tank provoked a lot of controversy. It had a few, uh, few attributes that were a lot better than other tanks. So specifically this tank had high mobility so it, uh, it could get to around 60 km per hour and uh, you could reposition very fast on the battlefield. You had a powerful gun with it, with a 128 uh, millimeter gun that would, could overmatch a lot of enemy armor. The camo was pretty bad for the tank, so this was kind of a balancing effect, especially when you consider the other premium tanks or even standard uh, tire tanks that, you could, uh, that this tank was in competition with. The Borsig, for example, a tire 8 in the German Tech 3, but this thing, this tank had a lot of uh, a lot better mobility than uh, than the Borsig, and it could make you quite a lot of credits. So, um, unlike unlike a lot of uh, TDs at the time, the tank also had a fully traversable turret, and the gun values were a lot better than let's say its counterpart, the T34 at the time, right? So the worst, the bad things about the tank were its uh, limited armor. I mean, in uh, the fact that it had no kind of armor, its large size making it a lot easier to hit, and uh, a pretty average, let's say, view range. The gun handling wasn't the greatest, so you needed to compensate this. The, a lot of people, uh, newbies, were playing the tank. Uh, without having the proper equipment installed in it. It sold in high numbers. The bad players were balancing the good players um, when playing the tank, so the stats weren't looking incredible. But in the hands of a good player, this tank could do around 10k damage in a game and basically influence the game completely. So you could say that this tank had a really high skill ceiling. Now, time has passed, so now we're in 2024. We'll need to see how this tank actually holds out. So I do have a few live games prepared for you to actually see how the tank works. Uh, but uh, spoiler alert, it's still worth the gold or the asking price. Now, that's kind of a decision that you need to make. But if you do want a tank that has uh, good credit potential, this tank still holds up really well. And uh, on average, it will still make a lot of credits for uh, for the better players at least in uh, in the game and even for the worst players because uh, a lot of players playing this tank were accused of the fact that they could just press two then the pen was around 246 but you also had premium ammo with APCR of 311 and it was even faster the shell velocity was faster the tank in 2024, the Scorpion, is still an extremely popular tank and the uh, Wargaming will still make a lot of money with it and um, 
it's gonna remain a popular tank for a long um, uh, time due to the fact that it has all the attributes that I mentioned previously especially the fact that uh, it does 490 with an accurate gun with good enough camo and uh, it has good mobility so now let's go to the main event and uh, see some live gameplay and uh, see how the tank actually works in 2024 hey guys Today we're gonna be playing in the Scorpion G. This is probably the first overpowered tank that was introduced in the game. And uh, we do want to see after a few years if the tank is still overpowered and if it's still worth the asking price now in 2024. Or um, has its time passed due to the fact that a lot of other better tanks have appeared uh, in the meantime. Now we're gonna st stay in a typical bush for now and let this uh, gentleman over here in the nomad tank or the charioteer, however you want to call it, to take the lead for a change and maybe we can get a few shots in. Oh, there's another fast scorpion. Yeah, he went over there. Also, the, also there's a bat jet. If the bat jet does intend to appear, then we should be able to greet him. I'm just gonna readjust the position a little bit. That's an aggressive Udes. That was a really aggressive Udes. And now the bat jet is pretty greedy. And he will get away with it, most likely. No, that's unfortunate. I should have aimed a little one second extra. Hopefully the T10 can survive just a tiny touch more. I think he's actually thriving. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> the enemies are a little bit too aggressive in my opinion. This pattern doesn't really know what he's doing. Yeah, that's what happens when we give everyone tire 9. Free tank. A lot of people don't really have a clue on how to play the game. Still, it was a good, good will gesture from uh, Wargaming. But if they were, would have at least made made the tank a little bit competent, at least some people would have had a chance. Now the way they did it, well. Not the best. Let's see, not the best. It's only 8 to 1 for us. So, uh, yeah. I don't know what that guy is doing. Maybe he's AFK or something. Or maybe he doesn't want to play the game. This... This was something else, mate. that that back is still over there but I can't really shoot him I don't know why I should have had a lot more shots is the wood still over there let's find out Yeah, he's still AFK. And, uh... Yeah, the Scorpion. What can I say? It's a tank that will do a lot of damage and... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty nice gun platform. And uh, from what you see over here, 
at least when it's not being shot at, the tank would appear to be worth it. But uh, we need a bit more evidence to, to actually to actually say for sure, right? So this was actually missed all of those shots. So this was a 3.5k damage with uh, a chunk of profit. 12 shots fired, 8 hits, 8 pens. Second on experience, first and damage. So, uh, okay, let's go for round number 2. Alright, now uh, we're gonna see if the Scorpion actually works when it's in a more favorable uh, environment, in a more favorable tire wise. So, the Scorpion, when it, when it was first introduced, it sold so fast and so big that actually, in a, six months later, the Wargaming introduced basically another Scorpion, which they called um, the Su 130 PM, which was basically the Russian variant of this tank, and uh, that that tank had um, 30 more uh, Alpha, and uh, I think it also had a little bit more pen, if I don't, I'm not mistaken, but the problem is that it didn't have the fully traversable turret. So it was a good tank, oh come on, it was a good tank as well, but uh, it wasn't exactly, it didn't have the same kind of flexibility as this one. But in true Russian fashion, they made it so stealthily that that tank could, have, could fire quite a lot more without any kind of issues. Come on, ace you. STRV, you do want to come over here. Now the main difference is that I can take a shot from this guy without any issues. He's a teaser, okay, fair enough. I'm going to relocate just a tiny bit. Oh, come on. Seriously? Are you seriously doing that to me? Now, it seems that uh, the enemy team is trying to actually advance over here. Hello, IS. Bye bye, yes. Bravery goes hand in hand with stupidity. No. Okay, I think it's time at this point to actually go for it. Because I think that our team is going to win this one. And uh, I kind of get bored by just staying and sniping all the time. I'm gonna play this tank as a medium. Okay, so the STRV is still here, which is a lovely thing to see. Yeah, I'm not gonna stay over here anymore. Let's go! Goodbye. And that's why the Scorpion was thought to be, by a lot of people, as a kind of an overpowered tank. To the fact that it was good enough to actually uh, push sometimes, you know? It's really, really easy to do good damage in the tank. 
Alright, now we're gonna see how the scorpion does when uh, it's actually a tough tire. So I'm gonna go to my favorite bush when uh, I'm starting on this side, on this map, and I'm gonna just um, do the bit of gardening over here, because I don't really like the way the trees are um, arranged. And I'm uh, hoping that uh, my IS over here is going to actually spot something or gonna get shot and at and spot a few enemy tanks. Yep, he just goes for it. Oh come on, seriously the, the wheel. It's one of those moments when you just hit that road wheels. Hello KV2. I should be a bit more patient. I don't know why I'm this jumpy today. Hopefully the TV2 will fall back. That's more like it. I mean this guy is just... You shouldn't do that, mate. That's a no-no. Problem is, the enemy team is so aggressive that they might actually win it. Okay, fair enough. So the KV2 is still over there. The main issue with this tank is the fact that it moves the turret a bit too slow for my taste. But it's a TD so you can't expect it to be completely overpowered. Or can you? No? Well it seems that some tanks are more... Uh, Oh, this tank takes a long time to fire. Uh, that's shot, mate. When you're trying to snipe with this tank, you need to give it way too much lead. I'm used to playing tanks that are, have a little bit less lead time. I don't know why, but it, it just doesn't work now. Let's fire one more. No. It's way too up towards the field okay so this guy has been uh, shot at by this see if we can actually get this guy in the right that's more like it kv want to do Took a big hit over here. Does he move? That's the real question over here. And I think he stayed in the same position. Yeah, so when you're top tire, the main issue of the enemy teams is that the skill isn't there. So they don't really know the positions. And, uh, yeah, things like this tend to happen. Now the Polak tank will try to fire towards me. Let's see if we can spot them some more. Yep. Yeah, I got spotted. I knew that that was going to happen. The T-34-3 uh, has been buffed quite a bit. Oh, 
Now I don't expect the T34 to stay in the same position right now. Even a broken clock can fire twice properly. I don't know why, but I do have a, little, a lot more success on this map than on other maps. I think due to the fact that games tend to be a little bit longer, and I do like the games which are longer. No? I think that the Polo tank is actually a pretty decent player. Now if you would just tiny that little bit advanced, then that would be lovely. Okay, I do think at this point in the game, you just might be able to advance, progress the game. When you don't really have the angle, you need to create an angle. I do want to support this guy. And at this point you can see that the Scorpion does have quite a bit of mobility. In order to change flanks and uh, yeah, just be a nuisance. No? And if you do, do need to try and uh, run away, you can actually do this pretty effectively in this tank. Come on. Should have aimed it just a little bit lower. The main issue, as you saw previously, is the fact that the Scorpion does not have any kind of armor whatsoever. Hello, Basoto. Goodbye, Basoto. So, I do wonder, where is the RT? There we are. And, uh... Yeah. I think that, uh... That T-34 just got flapped. So, the Scorpion. Uh, it's still a pretty good tank. It's a mobile tank destroyer that you can do a lot of good things in. It's a lot better than the Nomad that they are selling right now, at the same time with the mission, which is basically a charioteer. Uh, because the tank does have more alpha damage, more pen, um, it has a more accurate gun, I think it even has some better dispersion as well. So, if I were in your position, between um, trying to get this uh, marathon done to get the Nomad and paying for it, or just straight up buying the Scorpion, yeah, there's there's no comparison over there. <coughs> so. Um, let's talk a little bit about the scorpion um, the scorpion stats so the scorpion is a german premium tank destroyer that has 490 uh, average damage with 246 uh, pen which are with around 10 seconds the gun loading and some bad reverse speed with some adequate gun depression excellent aim time but you need to be careful that this doesn't go take into account dispersion the dispersion is a lot worse on this tank so you need to give it around two or three seconds to properly aim then the uh, when the gun is fully aimed it is very accurate you have some really good uh, uh, dpm as well 
you don't have any kind of hit, hit points, just a thousand or a little bit. You have no armor, so each round will absolutely destroy you. Um, the weight limit is good enough, so you can actually, uh, if you get the chance to, you might actually consider ramming the lights. You have enough specific power to move around the battlefield pretty nicely, with a 60 per, uh, km stop speed. And then um, the concealment, it says over here 36, but trust me, this is a lot worse when you don't have the camo net on or you don't have a good camo crew. So the camo crew needs to be the priority. Yeah, I think even before the brother in arms. You need to have camo on this tank, otherwise this, this won't work. You should uh, always focus the firepower on this cat and tank, even before vents or anything like that, in my opinion. Then, uh, in my opinion, this is one of the rare occasions when the tank that you're playing should have the camo on it. So, the camo on it does give you a lot of extra concealment and it, this tank needs it more than any other TD. For me, this is the, the actual sniper. You need to, to snipe in this tank. Otherwise, you're probably doing it right, or wrong. So, um, yeah, this is this is the Scorpion. So, going back to to the original question, is the Scorpion worth the price right now? Well, that's a judgment that uh, you need to take into account and uh, do for yourself. But I'd say that if you do want a TD, then this is a good option. If you do want a TD at tire rate that makes a lot of uh, uh, credits and you don't need to fire gold in it. Uh, this this is a good uh, good tank, but with the caveat that you need a decent camo crew and also uh, You need to have some brother in arms as well And you need to know uh, the fact that whenever you're gonna get uh, Focused you will die. So there's no question about that if the enemies see you and there are multiple of them You don't have the firepower to actually kill them all so that being said um Thank you very much again for uh, watching this uh, tank review basically up to the end and um, uh, if you did enjoy it please consider subscribing and uh, maybe if you did like this video uh, give also a like and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.